Well, good morning, everyone. It's Mel here from UG Studio, Sydney, Australia. And I am here with the editor of Toy and Hobby Retailer. And this is the Toy Fair bumper issue. Mm -hmm. So thank you for joining us, Imogen. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what does it take to put together a Toy Fair bumper issue like this? I mean, there is so much yes. information in yes. here. Yes, it's a big addition to put together. It's our biggest that we put out. Um, so I start working on this in October, mm -hmm. uh, ready to have it ready in February. So I start touching base with all the exhibitors and yep. I talk to um, the ATA quite closely to get information from them too. And then um, it's pretty much just collating all the information from the exhibitors mm -hmm. and their images. And then um, the excess information at the front is um, content that we think is interesting to people who will be attending yeah. the fair. So, yeah, it's a, it's a long process to put together, but yeah. um, it's really rewarding when it comes out and it adds value and use to people who are coming to the show. Definitely. Yeah. Is, is there anything in particular you like covering in the magazine? It, toys or industry news or doing interviews yeah. with people? I think um, it's, it's great to do both sort of sides. So you get the products and you see the innovation mm -hmm. and you see what's coming um, ahead of the show, which is really cool. Um, so sometimes I get the submissions, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Like, <laughs> that's amazing. And then it's also great to interview people about their yeah. businesses. So I know like you guys have been doing a lot of new stuff this year and it's been yep. great to kind of follow that and see how it's going. So um, that was yeah, really appreciated sides. our coverage in the magazine. <laughs> We've got a terrific ad here at the back and some, and some news inside. Yeah. So that's wonderful. Yeah. And I, I know you've been, so you also cover all the fairs. Uh, our industry fairs. I know you've been to Nuremberg and yep. Hong Kong as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some trend information in this magazine, which mm -hmm. we really appreciate. Are there any trends that you've seen at the fair or even just here at the Australian fair walking around mm. that we should be taking note of? Well, I think um, there's a big movement in sustainability mm -hmm. at the moment, especially um, in Nuremberg, it was really noticeable. So yeah. a lot of businesses are trying to find ways to create product that is not going to harm the planet. Yeah. So trying to find reusable um, materials mm. or uh, making products out of recyclable things. So that has been a quite a big noticeable yeah. trend that's going on at the moment. And I think it was one of the, the actual Spearware and yes. Messers trends yes. that they said was going to be a thing. So I can see um, there are some exhibitors here who are doing that mm -hmm. as well. Um, I think you guys have probably noticed a lot recently or in the past couple of years, the um, party game, adult game trend yes, has been um, has been around and is still a really strong performer. Yeah. So a lot of people are sort of jumping on that bandwagon of that fun kind of quirky humour. So yeah. yeah, so those are kind of the big ones that I have noticed going around. Um, there's a lot of pastels in terms of colours, okay, yeah. um, which I think is just a beautiful, like it's a great way to um, bring, refresh a line yeah. with pastel colours. Um, yeah, I think those are kind of the main Excellent. ones that I can think of. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're seeing a trend as well for uh, 20 to 30 year olds to have a bit of a digital detox right. in their lives. So when we're talking about uh, party games as well, even strategy games, being able to um, hop off our social media for the night, create an experience at home. Definitely something that's post-worthy, mm. uh, but also have that one-to-one um, -one interaction as well and that social interaction. Mm. So um, now at the fair here, I'd love to know what an average day is like for you. This is obviously the industry event for Australia. We yep. represent the industry in Australia. So we uh, visit all of our major advertisers here. Mm -hmm. So we make appointments with them throughout the whole sort of uh, four days and try and see what they've got coming up, what they might yeah. want to talk about with us later on in the year, um, how they've been going, if there's any news that they think that they want to um, work with us on. So we sort of discuss those things on their stand and we see their new products and, and meet yeah. you know people that we might not have met before. Um, and then also for me, it's more trying to gather content for the wrap up. So yeah. it's taking photos, it's taking videos, it's being on socials and seeing what people are doing and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I think on Wednesday, I've like blocked out time to just run around Great. trying to take all the photos Great. of well, everyone. We'll be here, so. we love a photo. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. take any of us. Yeah, yeah. So um, 
Yeah, that's sort of the main yeah. kind of things that we do. So it's pretty much today and tomorrow quite busy for okay. meetings. We're just sort of back and forth throughout the fair. So it's good. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what we have to for, do. For the rest of the year after your fair wrap up, <laughs> uh, which sounds like it's a lot of work. Yeah. But well, what will we be seeing from Toy and Hobby Retailer into 2020? Is there anything that you're looking to cover in particular? Yeah, well, we're quarterly now. So mm -hmm. we um, kind of cover the key moments in the year. So we obviously have our Toy Fair edition. And then yep. our next one is the wrap up of all the fairs and sort of of like it's a we're calling it the global insights edition okay. so we're going to take what Great. i've seen and learned overseas um at the shows and sort of put it into a magazine to say this is what is coming because we find that um the us and the uk there tends to be a knock-on effect to australia yes. whether or not that comes in the same year or a few months down the track yes. is you know uh what we kind of like to give the australian market a bit of a heads up on and then Later on in the year, we have our licensing edition. So mm -hmm. we're really trying to put a focus for one edition of the year on licensing, because obviously that's a big part of the mm -hmm. toy industry and it really plays into new products that come out and, um, you know, uh, trending kind of yes. items. So we are focusing on that in our September, October, November, August, September, October Great. edition. And then our directory comes out at the end of the year. So that's for the year ahead. And that's... then we're back into Toy Fair yeah, again. Yeah, it's, it's so... Into it's... <laughs> 2020, yeah, we'll be yeah. doing this next year as well. So it's, um, it's a big... It, the, we're trying to make the editions fatter and, and yeah. build with more content and stuff now that we do have that time as a quarterly magazine to do that. So um, it puts it in a, in a more premium position because obviously mm. there's only four opportunities to have your story in yeah. print. There's now. a great resource for you. Yeah. 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 Um, and we obviously have our, our digital space. So we have our newsletter and a website and um, we're very present on socials. So uh, we have that kind of up to date. This is what's happening this week, and yeah. then um, this is more for longer form content. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for no uh, giving us an insight into the toy and hobby retailer. No problem. Just lastly, uh, we would love to know what was your favourite game as a child. Well, I had a lot of um, Simpsons based okay. games, so I'm a bit of a Simpsons fan. So I had like. Uh, the Simpsons board game, I yes. think it was, was on its own, and then a couple of other like um, licensed editions of uh, Cluedo, I think, and um, and Monopoly as well. So some so, real classics. Yeah, yeah. so I've, I've, I've been any a, board flipping moments in your oh, childhood not, with not Monopoly? For me because <laughs> my brother was very competitive like that and <laughs> did flip a few boards. Right, okay, there's yeah, always so, one in yeah. every family. <laughs> So yes, he was a bit of a, a sore loser, definitely, yep. but I think he's grown out of it. I say that, but I haven't played Monopoly with him in a while, so you know, okay. that story might Well, there the might same. be a, a family uh, holiday coming up yeah. where you can have another go. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. No we problem. really appreciate thank the taking time me. to visit us. So that's Imogen Bailey from the Toy and Hobby Retailer.